as you pray with me. Father, we come thanking you for your love towards us. And now we ask that we might be mindful of your presence with us, that you would cover us, keep us, fill us, that we might be prepared for the places that you will send us. This we ask in your name. Amen. Over the recent decades, I have taken this weekend journey time and time again. But now, my perspective has shifted. My point of view has been perhaps enlightened. In that, as we prepared even and began this journey on last night, I convinced myself I had walked the road before. I had convinced myself that I had seen it and heard it and had done it. But there are times when you are simply doing what you've always done before. And it wasn't until the concluding of the evening, as Reverend Barnett invited me to go pray. I sat in a familiar place, but heard a different voice. I sat in a place where just being invited to prayer, I was reminded that there's power in prayer and that prayer changes things. And while I sat there considering my life, my family, my walk, my future, the circumstances that we live in. I sat there and recounted the words that said, I thirst. And so it has been said by numerous persons that a picture is worth a thousand words. We have arrived at a time and a moment in the gospel text where perhaps with anticipation and impatient expectation, if we're honest, we desire to get beyond this moment and through this moment. If we're honest, there are moments in all of our lives where we have passed too quickly. We have rushed through them and where we have not given the appropriate consideration and attention. Here we are all gathered together, called to hear a voice and to hear the voice and the messages of Friday. While we are at times inclined to perhaps look ahead to Sunday morning. Here we are once again gathered on this hill called St. Alban in order that we would be mindful of and remember what took place on another hill called Golgotha. In your mind's eye, do not miss the picture that has been painted according to the gospel writer John. It is a troubling picture. It is a painful picture, but it is a powerful picture. It is not though a static picture. It is a moving picture. It moves from scene to scene. And so join me quickly as we follow Jesus, beginning in the garden and arriving at a cross. Follow Jesus as John directs us. Picture the scenes as Jesus in a prayerful garden context that is transformed into a clash of groups that are moving in opposite directions. Follow the scenes as Jesus encountered the betrayal of Judas and he is arrested by the religious leaders. Follow Jesus as the scene shifts from the homes of Annas, Caiaphas, and ultimately Pilate to the denial of Peter, 
not just once, but three times. As we look at the scenes, there is intrigue, there is drama, and there is tension brought on by the interrogations carried out by the religious and Roman government officials. There Jesus stands experiencing false accusations. There he stands in the midst of being mocked. There he st stands with a crown of thorns, suffering the abuse of the flogging, the whipping, and the beating, all while the crowd is not lifting the name of Jesus. But all we hear in the background is the name Barabbas. John shifts the scene as the soldiers weave a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They dress Jesus in a purple robe and usher him out. Picture the crowds now moving from the cries of Barabbas to hearing crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. They're words that cause me to shake. Words that cause me to shudder. And make me wonder in which direction would I have been moving on that day. I do not want you to overlook the picture that John sets before us as Jesus carries and is then nailed to the cross. While hanging on that cross between two thieves, one who is listening to Jesus and another who is just looking at Jesus, we see the agony of a mother and the concern of a loving son. It is from the cross we hear Jesus speak as he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple who he loved standing beside her, here is your mother. And it is after this we hear Jesus say, I am thirsty. Pay attention to the conflicting and contrasting picture that is before us now. It is not the portrait and picture of a moment where we desire to linger and stay. I'm thirsty. Yet we're called to listen, to watch, and to remember something from this encounter at the cross so that when we walk away, the memory of the cross will never fade away. Here we are at the cross. Here we are standing at the intersection between morning and evening, at the intersection between two thieves, at the intersection between ultimately life and death. In this life, we will all have to navigate the intersections of our lives. We will all be called to make choices between right and wrong. We will all be called to make choices between going forward and going backward. We will all have to choose between love and hate and ultimately between life and death. We are all called to choose the direction that we will walk each and every day, but in this day, we've got a choice to make. Consider the seemingly contradictory and conflicting picture, for it is a Friday called good, but those around the cross cannot see any good in the moment. Here is the King of Kings, not sitting on a throne, but hanging on a cross. Here is Christ who said, I thirst, but he is longing for water, and we've heard him say he is the living water. Here is Jesus saying, I'm thirsty. When we've heard him tell a woman at the well that I've got water, that if you drink of this, you'll never thirst again. Here we are at the intersection, realizing his humanity while acknowledging his divinity. Jesus asked for water, but they gave him sour wine. 
They gave him sour wine, perhaps for some to deaden the pain, but perhaps as well to keep him from talking. Because maybe the wine would have been so sour, it would have closed his throat. And there are a lot of persons who want to keep us from talking. Because they knew if Jesus had continued to talk, there would have been the possibility that the lame would have started walking again. If he had started to talk, perhaps... Here, the lame would have begun walking, the dumb started talking, the sick would have been healed, and perhaps even the dead get up one more time. If he had started talking, the hopeless would find their hope. The more he talked, the more transformation took place around him. Jesus desired water that would ease his pain and perhaps prolong the moment. But look closely and listen carefully because there are moments when we do not see and the moment does not reveal everything that is taking place. Keep listening. Keep watching. Keep waiting. Because while Jesus is struggling, heaven was working behind the scenes. Keep listening. Keep watching. Keep waiting while you're thirsting. Because somewhere in the moving picture, the typeset for the program is being prepared. Somewhere behind the scenes, the ushers are getting their direction. Somewhere behind the scenes, they're preparing and putting in place all that would need to be set out in just a little while. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. Amen.